we have the energy industry. I like this one because it's got a very easy proof and it's easy to understand. Essentially, all of our fossil fuels, coal, natural gas, oil, things like this, they're all formed by geologic processes. No one would deny this to be the case, right? So we find them using things like basin modeling, a process that involves radiometric dating and the assumption that radiometric dating, a process rooted in the radioactive decay law, works. So can we actually find um, natural fossil fuels, things like that, using basin modeling? Um, the answer is, of course, a resounding yes, because every part of the energy industry utilizes basin modeling and radiometric dating in order to actually fuel our global economy, which is something like a $257 billion annual industry. It's a lot of money if, <laughs> if the underlying assumptions of the Earth being very ancient, something that is, of course, foundational to radiometric dating working, uh, is false. So I pulled up a paper here called A Novel Geochemical Toolbox for the Petroleum and Mineral Industries, just to show you kind of what I mean. This was a semi-recent paper. And basically what they've noted here is that they found another cool way to radiometrically date things, right? So the underpinning research highlights right here uh, showed that the iridium osmium chronometer is a reliable, precise chronometer for obtaining the depositional age of classic marine and uh, lacustrine sedimentary rocks. Uh, it illustrated the utility of this method to define the age of oil generation from a source rock, and it demonstrated how iridium osmium uh, platinum and palladium geochemistry can be used to characterize fingerprint crude oils. Discovered that it's an isotope system, and this various systematics can be used to ascertain the timing of oil generation and identify an oil source rock age uh, in sedimentary basins by analysis of oils alone. It developed an understanding of the optimal, optimal use excuse me, of uh, molybdenite and other sulfide minerals for precise rhenium osmium geochronology in ore systems, and demonstrated independently that rhenium decay <clears throat> that the rhenium decay constant is accurately and precisely determined critical knowledge underpinning rhenium osmium um, uh, ge geochronology, excuse me. So um, <laughs> I hope this demonstrates just how important knowing the age of different rocks is for being able to fill up your car or heat your home. This is obviously very problematic to young earth creationism in particular, not so much old earth creationism or um, in intelligent design proponents, but this is just very damning, right? Um, the entire economy of our world depends on fossil fuels and they use um, processes associated with the ancient age of the earth to find them. So I would say that very simply, the energy industry does indeed preclude young earth creationism. Okay, go ahead with the next question, my friend. Okay, so let's move on to this question that I have here. And this is a common objection that I see over and over again, even though we've addressed it and refuted it. Uh, just recently, there was a video, I think it was titled something like, you know, top five reasons why young earth creation is false or impossible. Oh, or something. that's Erica, the poor <laughs> gibbon that's been hit in the belly. I uh, watched that video. Which one were you thinking of there? So there were s several, and this one popped up again. So I thought, you know what? Let's address this one from the good old Gutsy Gibbon here. And uh, the question here is, I'll summarize the argument, okay, Professor McQueen. So evolutionists will say that all of our fossil fuels, coal, natural gas, and oil are all formed by geologic processes. And because of this, a process called basin modeling, which also involves radiometric dating and the assumption that radiometric dating works. So essentially the question is this, Professor McQueen, does finding natural gas and these other things I mentioned require deep time? Okay, it's interesting how the Holy Spirit leads me as I prepare each week. Here is uh, an oil and gas map. Let me get the top of this so you can read it. This is an oil and gas map of all the fields in Louisiana. Uh, let me pick one that I am close to. I hope you can see a large uh, orange basin now, this is a map with north at the top, but this is the outline of a basin called the Monroe Field. And I live a one-hour drive from this field. 
The Monroe Field extends over to a uh, community called uh, Delhi, um, which uh, is on this map in green. You see what looks like a green arrow there, Donnie, uh, near that orange? That's yes. the Delhi Field. That's that's an hour to the east of me, the other is an hour to the west. I was fortunate enough to be given some stratigraphic charts by a, uh, a colleague of mine who had been a geologist. His name is Harry Stone. He's gone to be with the Lord now, but Brother Harry gave me some stratigraphic columns for this basin. And so... This is actually something that I know about as a um, geologist. If you want to learn the basics of this, Erica, you need to pull up. Did you ever make the graphic about this, Donnie? About the impact article number 155? It's not important because I've got it right here. This is uh, an essay that I wrote back in the 1980s. Um, that um, deals with the chemistry of oil explained by flood geology. It has some of the answers that you need, Erica. But let's go to this whole business of the radioactive, the value of radiometric dating when it comes to basins. Okay. Now, I've mentioned two uh, basins here in Louisiana. One of them is the Monroe gas field and the uh, other one, I'm sorry, the Monroe oil field and then the Delhi gas field. And this is to the west of me and this is to the east of me. Erica, I want you to go to your petroleum geologist buddies that seem to feed you this information. Uh, and ask them for $100,000. They'll get it back. I have some data that I have compiled in this Delhi field that would allow me, should your buddies give me the $100,000, to build what's called a wildcat well or drill a wildcat well in this Delhi field. And I would drill it on the basis of Flood geology stratigraphy. What? What? You mean that you don't need to know what it says on the geologic map here? This is Jackson, Mississippi, and this is where I live. Whoops. Got to move it where you can see it. Oh, well. Uh, these rocks over here are uh, supposed to be... Well, this is easily detachable. So these rocks over here to the west of uh, where I live, they are supposed to be uh, tertiary, quaternary, but they go down to the upper Cretaceous. And that's what's buried uh, in the subsurface. And so... Did I figure this out by saying, oh, wait a minute. The Cretaceous is so many years old. No, no, I didn't figure it out. I used the same criterion that uh, Tim Clary used. This is a, uh, an article from December of 2021. And this diagram is repeated in the book that Donnie has there about uh, the basin that basin that you see in yellow and red there is offshore Louisiana. And you can see the peninsula of Florida there. And that basin is so important. And it's the kind of thinking that I did. Let me read you what uh, Dr. Clary says here. Um, one of the most spectacular examples of offshore Tejas deposits. Now remember, sequence stratigraphy starts with salk and goes up through 
uh, Zuni and, 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 and so forth, Tejas, Absarica, all kinds, all words are used. This is uh, the Tejas sequence stratigraphy group. Recent discoveries by oil company exploration. What? You mean the oil company is not looking for oil and gas using radiometric dates? No, they're looking for structures and chemistry. Let me keep on reading. Recent discoveries by oil company, oil company exploration have confirmed that the Whopper sand extends across 400, I'm sorry, 40,000 square miles in the Gulf of Mexico, residing in water depths at 10,000 feet and is over 1,000 feet thick and on average 2,000 feet thick. So if you see a bullseye in the middle of this uh, class, you see that bullseye, it's got 1,000, 1,500, 500 and stuff. That is called an isopac map. That word in Latin, isopac, means equal thickness. And so here is a oil field that was discovered by geophysical means after World War II. And you know what? It was discovered actually after the first deep uh, wells began to be put into the Gulf of uh, Mexico. Um, and so let me summarize this argument about basin uh, geology. I have studied this. I've got a workup on a wildcat wed. Well, I want to uh, uh, drill as soon as Erica's teacher send me the hundred thousand dollars. I'll do it myself. I've got local drillers that'll help me. I have studied this. I even taught petroleum geology at Virginia State University in the early 80s. And so I actually do know what I'm talking about. And so I would summarize it this way. Not a barrel of oil, not a cubic foot of natural gas has ever been found through the systematic application of geochronology or evolutionary stratigraphy. As a quick reminder to everyone, hit that like button. It actually does help. Team Standing for Truth is out.